are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. I am Marcus Mosher. He is Landon McCool, and we are Locked On Cowboys, previewing the Cowboys week 11 game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, but before we do that, Lane, and we've got some news that we t- want to talk about. But how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. You know, I'm ready, trying to get ready for uh, Turkey Day. Uh, so uh, I'm excited about that, getting all the shopping done that we can. Got a kiddo who's in the last day of school before Thanksgiving. So, uh, you know, and then talking about Cowboys. There's nothing more Thanksgiving for me than that, honestly. So we, we should probably also talk about this. Our next week's schedule is going to be a little crazy. So just, just have to bear with us, right? So we'll we'll have a post-game show like we always do. That'll probably come out Sunday night, Monday morning. So be on the lookout for that. We'll have a crossover show at some point in the week. We'll have a, uh, a preview show, you and I getting ready for the game, yep. and then it'll be time for the Raider Cowboy game on Thursday. So uh, crazy, crazy week. But uh, let's talk about some of the news coming out of Dallas today. And Jerry Jones let us know that we've got a new starting left guard. Connor McGovern will make his first start at left guard on Sunday against the Chiefs. What are your initial reactions? I'm surprised. I mean, uh, I, obviously I was. I, I talked. To, we talked, to, I think, the previous day that – you know, someone had asked a question about it, about this. And I thought that maybe center would be the position that they would make the move for sooner than Connor Williams. But, you know, to be fair, I, I think Biotis has played a lot better football these last few weeks for sure. Yep. I mean, better than he had been playing. Uh, and I, I mean, I honestly just don't know that Connor had been playing poorly, you know? I, so, I don't think he has been. I think he's been the a subject of some awful penalty calls. Some of that were yep. his fault. Several others that were not. I think that they, you know, they view Connor McGovern's upside as higher than Connor Williams because I think he has a little bit more physical nature. But I mean, I'm I'm a little concerned. I mean, I've seen Connor McGovern play uh, guard before, and 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 to me, it, it felt like at least then that Connor Williams was a better was a better player at at that point. Obviously, this is you know we, we've gone a whole half season since I've watched Connor McGovern play regular guard. Yep. So there certainly is the opportunity for him to have improved and, and taken over uh, Connor Williams spot. Uh, but I, it's just that we haven't seen it yet. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant, but I think I wonder obviously why this game. Yeah. I mean, that's a good question too. You know, I, 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 I think it, it, it's, it's an odd, it's an odd thing to kind of just pick one randomly in the middle. Maybe the idea is that you get, you know, a couple games really quickly in a row with Connor and, and see how it is. And if you want to swap back, you're, I, I, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't know. really understand the timing. I, I can't really justify it or now it, it could I, just be the week that he got better, that he was better than Connor Williams. I don't know. I really don't. And maybe it's just the thing they want to reward him with some snaps because he's been playing well and practicing well. I don't know. It, it's, it's yeah. fascinating for a bunch of different reasons. Connor yeah. Williams is in a contract year going to get paid this offseason, and now all of a sudden he's benched? That's kind of fascinating, right? Uh, you've got some yeah. games coming up against big-time defensive lines, at least I think, in the Raiders coming up on Thanksgiving. The Chiefs, when they can put Chris Jones on you, like that's an awful matchup for almost anybody. I don't know. It's, it's fascinating. However, I think we should give the Cowboys some benefit of the yeah. doubt here. They've made some – bold moves this off season or during this, not this off season, during the season that we've questioned and a lot of them have worked out. Okay. So maybe, maybe we should believe in Joe Philbin a little bit here. Uh, I, I agree. I, I mean, I certainly think that he's earned our trust at a certain point for this. Uh, it's questionable to us and we should point it out because that's, <laughs> that's what we're here for. But uh, yeah, I think it's, it's certainly fair to point out that cl- clearly the coaches know more than we do. Uh, not only in in breadth and depth of knowledge of football, but also the particulars of the situation because they see these guys in practice every single day. So uh, I think, in, and I think that, like you mentioned, they've earned the benefit of a doubt here. So yeah, I think we're going to see exactly how it plays out. I will say that it seems very similar to the Gallup situation, <laughs> where you got a guy in the contract year that you may be at one point have been considering coming back, and suddenly not playing uh, when they were, you know, eligible to play. It seems. It's fascinating. Real fascinating. Um, yeah. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see how he plays left guard. I think even Jerry Jones mentioned it 
most of his time in practice in during his career has been spent at right guard or center. Yep. So having him play left guard is is very interesting. Uh, did want to know that Mike McCarthy said both Connors will play in this game. So I don't know if they're going to rotate or are they going to see Connor Williams at fullback? That doesn't really make sense. Or we're going to see Connor McGovern go back to fullback in Williams slide at left guard. I have no idea, um, but it'll be interesting to see what, what they decide to do there. Yeah. And maybe we'll see Connor Williams do a little bit of kind of moving around at, you know, I, I feel certain he could play that kind of big tight end third tackle position if he needed to. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, I, it's going to be interesting. I would assume that if they're going to rotate these guys, they're going to do it by series, probably. I, I also wonder, like, okay, th- this is, sounds weird, but we have our eyes set on the number one seed in the NFC because why not? When you're, what, are they eight and two now? Seven yeah. and two. Seven and two. Seven yeah. and two. I, I just wonder if they don't care about it as much, and it's more of a long term thing. Like, hey, let's see what Connor McGovern looks like right now against a, a, a non NFC opponent, right? Yeah. We have two games against the AFC. Let's play them. And if it's, if it doesn't work, that's okay. We can go back to Connor Williams, but if it gives us a 1% chance to be better, why not go out and see? I, I just wonder if they're viewing the season like that more so than, okay, it's an absolute race to get to the number one seed. If we're not the number one seed, we have no chance to make the Super Bowl. You know? Yeah, and it, and kind of going back to what we've just talked about or a while ago, at least, you know, it, in regards to these games, you know, everyone out on the outside in the NFL sphere is viewing this as like a big measuring stick game, and, and all that may be true, like in an optics situation, but again, this is a non-conference game, so it is the least valuable win that you it's can a have big game loss. because it's the chiefs it, right because yeah, it's the exactly. super bowl champion from two years ago they made the super bowl it's gonna get killer ratings but i just i don't know i kind of think mike mccarthy has a longer term view on this than just making sure to do everything possible to win this upcoming game you know i i don't disagree i so, mean that's clearly that's clearly i think that that clearly is obvious just based on the fact that they're choosing this specific week to do this it's like they he clearly doesn't care about you know the the kind of measuring stick aspect of it or yeah. or maybe he does and maybe that's why he's making this change but i i think it's it's interesting that as well that that this is the game that they're deciding to choose to do this because you know in some ways you could say it's an important game it's a measuring stick game but in a lot of ways in like as far as playoff race and and seating and that well, sort of thing it's not it- that important it also could be just an opportunity to get McGovern some snaps because yeah. what happens if Connor McGovern gets hurt in week 17 and is not available for the first round of playoffs? I don't think you really want McGovern starting his first game at left guard against, let's say, the Rams in the first round of the playoffs, right? Yeah. This at least gives you some some snaps to see how he does. I I, I don't know. I, I still don't necessarily agree, agree with it, but we'll see how it plays out. Let's, I, I, it's not fair to criticize him until we – Kind of see yeah. what's going on here. I agree. I mean, we're just trying to justify it. I, I'm sure they have good good reasons. And like I said, they've they've earned the benefit of a doubt here. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's uh, take a quick break so we can tell you guys about Get Upside. Our listeners are making up to 25 cents for every single gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now and use promo code TOUCHDOWN to get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code TOUCHDOWN to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. That is promo code TOUCHDOWN. All right, Landon, let's talk about the Cowboys' offense against the Chiefs' defense. How do you expect the Cowboys to try to attack them this week? Well, I, I think, you know, the Cowboys offense against the Chiefs defense is is a good matchup for the Cowboys. I mean, I, I think that the defense for Kansas City is, uh, uh, you know, it's getting some guys back. You, you're going to see, I think, uh, an improved uh, Chiefs defense. I do think, you know, you mentioned it, getting Chris Jones to play more defensive tackle is going to help them. Uh, having Melvin Ingram on the outside, uh, that's, you know, that's going to be a benefit to them uh, combined with Chris Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the most part, I think the Cowboys have a lot of things that they can take advantage of in the secondary, a lot of things to take advantage of in the second level of the, that defense. Um, you know, I think really the the question becomes 
how, what kind of game is this going to be? Is this going to yeah. be two teams in a boat race? Or is this going to be two teams desperately trying to keep the other offense off the field? Uh, you know, I think so the Cowboys I, can do that better than the Chiefs. I actually think absolutely. The can, I I kind of think if the Chiefs want to make this a high scoring game, I think they might be able to do that better than Dallas. I think it's it's going to be a closer game if if they do that. I think if both teams try to employ uh, uh, you know a, a ball control offense, Dallas is way more suited for that than than Kansas City is. So. Uh, yeah, and I, and I think the matchup on the on on that side is, is better for the Cowboys too. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how they do this. Uh, they are going to have a full complement of their offensive line, and and here's the other thing: maybe Connor McGovern, you know, who is a more physical player, that's uh, what I'm wondering, right? You know, is is, is an indication yep. that maybe yeah, they're going to run the football more. And look, I don't think that that's the worst. As much as everyone ha- hates to say it, as much as everyone may want a shootout. Uh, and I think that you're, there's going to be fireworks no matter what. But I think that the Cowboys uh, sh- wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be the worst thing for them to employ a little bit of ball control offense as well, just to kind of limit the opportunities for Kansas City, put them in a situation where they need to throw the football more, uh, and then you know just kind of put a cap on them, put you know put put the two shell over the top, and and you know so far look. Patrick Mahomes had a great game last week against the Raiders. The Raiders did not empl- employ the, the the defense that has been giving Patrick Mahomes fits mm-hmm. this year. Uh, the Cowboys are not a cover two team necessarily, certainly not a uh, Fangio uh, uh, tree branch team. They're not Brandon Staley, but I would say that they are much better suited than the Raiders to play that cover two shell. They have okay. played some of it. They've definitely played a lot of two man. So I, I think that you know that is something that the Cowboys may employ is a, a, a little bit ball control offense, knowing that they need to score. You know, not knowing that not, not meaning that they're punting on fourth down or anything, but you know, maybe mixing in the run with the pass to try to kill the clock a little bit, put more pressure on Kansas City to have to score, uh, and then, like I said, you know, using that t- cover two shell that I think if both defenses end up employing that kind of uh, defense where they're not going to let anything happen deep. The Cowboys are probably in a good spot because they are much better offense at driving the length of the field methodically with Dak than I think than I think the Kansas City Chiefs offense is with Mahomes. Yeah, and actually, I think this might be a Tony Pollard game because I think Pollard is going to be the better running back here because of the lack of speed the Chiefs have with their front seven. They're just not a fast unit at all. Um, Anthony Hitchens is their best linebacker. He doesn't really run sideline to sideline anymore. Uh, some of the other linebackers they use are, are not very good. Nick Bolton is not is not mm-hmm. necessarily a guy that plays with a lot of quickness. I think the Cowboys could use utilize the game plan in which Pollard and Zeke get, let's say, 30 combined carries, and they just have long drives to end in touchdowns. If the Cowboys play that style of football, I'm not sure the Chiefs are going to be able to win because any any drive in which they don't score, it's going to be very detrimental to them. So. I think the Cowboys are going to use that ball control style offense. We'll see how effective it is. I want to talk about the Chiefs secondary. So they have one really good corner in Legereus Sneed who plays on the outside and then slides into the nickel uh, when they play three corners. Traverius Ward is one of their outside corners. Other than that, it's not great for Kansas City. So do you think the Cowboys can and will move the ball successfully against the you know through the air if they want to yeah i mean honestly i think that they can move the ball against this chiefs defense however they want the issue that the cowboys are going to have with the chiefs defense is up front if they can block up the defensive line with with uh you know and we gotta we gotta mention this i mean even with Connor mcgovern getting his first start this is the first time since Thanksgiving in 2019 that you've had all of your designated starter offensive Mm -hmm. linemen playing in the same game, which is crazy to say. But I think now that you've got the full complement of those guys, you know, I I think, again, Kansas City is going to want to try to uh, mess you up up front. Uh, we know what Spagnuolo. (laughs) Listen, we all remember Spagnuolo's defenses and, and, and what it was like in the Giants. If his style of defense does not match up well for them against the, the the Cowboys. If they want to blitz at their regular rate or or you know use a lot of the cover zero blitzing stuff that they do, Dak is going to eat them alive. Yeah. And he, I mean he has done it all season. He's by far the best quarterback well, against the blitz. And now it's that you're getting Tyron back, like yeah. 
if you're you basically mean, the cow, Cowboys really use a ton of six man protections with Ezekiel Elliott as the blocker, right? If you want to send six guys against the Cowboys front six, I mean, the, they should kill them against the blitz. I would you don't have the horses to do that. Like that's, no. I mean, the, the chiefs don't have the horses to do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the, like if you want to send six, that's fine, but I'll take my six guys blocking any six defenders you want to send. And certainly any of the six defenders that the chiefs are going to send. Yeah. The Cowboys are, probably the best pass you know blocking team maybe not you know as far as one-on-one pass blocking uh unit scores but yep. they are best definitely the best pass blocking scheme team in football because they have one of the smartest quarterbacks who who reads pre-snaps and then probably the best you know pass blocking running back in all of football so it, it just makes them really good on these protections and then on top of that you've got three wide receivers all of which can win one-on-one matchups which is required for a lot of these zero blitzes so if Spagnola wants to try to come after Dak and blitz them, then we'll put up 50 on you guys if you want and then see if if uh, you, you guys can score as, as quickly as us get putting a, a shell on top of uh, of uh, Mahomes. I, I just I think that it's there's a lot of bad matchups for Kansas City on that side of the ball for the Cowboys offense versus the, the Chiefs defense. And and there certainly is a lot of bad matchups on the other side as well. well yeah, we're going to get to those in a second. But, yeah. but, but, I, but I would say it's not nearly as bad as the kind of the way things line up for Kansas City's defense versus uh, the Cowboys. Offense. I would say certainly on paper that is the case. Now, playing in Kansas City is extremely tough. And Amari Cooper talked about this yesterday on the fan. It's, it's really loud. It's hard to hear adjustments. And they do have a, a defense that swarms to the ball. And it does seem like, for whatever reason, the football finds – like Tyron Matthews. So you got to be really careful about tip passes at the line of scrimmage, turning into interceptions, drops, and all that kind of stuff because that's what the Chiefs defense relies on. And that's part of the reason why they've gotten to the Super Bowl two, you know, back-to-back seasons yeah. and almost in three straight seasons is the defense isn't supremely talented, but they find ways to make plays. So uh, keep an eye on those two or three little tip passes, drops, and hopefully those aren't the reason the Cowboys lose this game. Um, all right, I want to flip over to to the defense, the Cowboys defense. But before we do that, let's tell you guys about Bet Online, where you can bet on this game. The Cowboys are two and a half point underdogs, uh, which is an interesting line considering how good Kansas City has been at home. But Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the football and basketball action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile site to sign up today and receive your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code Locked On to receive your bonus from basketball, football, baseball, postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. We also want to tell you about Built Bar. It's the best tasting protein bar out there. It's hard to even explain it. Real chocolate, amazing flavors. It's just a great combination of low calories, high protein, and low sugar. With no crazy additives. Best of all, they taste fantastic. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next box at BuiltBar.com. All right, let's talk about the Cowboys' defense against the Chiefs' offense. A lot of weapons here. Mahomes is so dangerous, especially when he's not pressured. How do the Cowboys match up? Well, I mean, no one matches up well against Kansas City. <laughs> you know, and, and But I think you know the, the thing that has given... Uh, Mahomes trouble we haven't really seen him solve yet and he you know he's he was actually the person to admit I think it was to Collingsworth that he hates facing cover two defenses so mm-hmm. uh, you know I, I think the Cowboys clearly are not going to suddenly become a cover two team uh, but I think the idea of you know either disguising coverages which which is something that they have done um, and and just playing a couple more snaps than normal of kind of too high shell, I, I think is is a winning formula for the Cowboys. I mean, just simply because Kansas City hasn't quite proven that they can as effectively score against that defense. Um, you know, I, I think the thing, if you look at, you know, you look at uh, uh, the Chargers, you look at the Broncos, these are two teams in the AFC West. There's a reason that they have deployed that that defense there i mean everything is about stopping patrick mahomes in that division as it should be because they're the you know the team that's made the super bowl the last two years so you know i think those that's the kind of thing that has given him the most trouble 
And since they don't necessarily have, I think that the key to facing those kind of defenses is having a run game that can be explosive. Because if you can take chunks out of out of that defense in the run game, eventually, any defensive coordinator, even Brandon Staley, even Fangio, they're going to get trigger fingers, and they're going to be like, they're going to like, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, and then eventually they're going to drop a guy back into the box. And when they do that, that's when you can go back over the top. Uh, I don't think the Chiefs necessarily have that, you know. Even with uh, even with their full complement of running backs coming back, if that's the case, I just it don't know that they like have. Edward Tiller's playing in this game, by the oh, way. Okay, so if if, he, if Tiller's not playing, I'm even more so. I just don't know that they have the horses, you know, or the, the the offensive line necessarily, which has been good, but I don't know that they've been great in necessarily run blocking. Uh, so I, I think the Cowboys have a distinct advantage in the sense that. They, they have, both of these teams have great quarterbacks who can throw it all over the field. The Chiefs don't have the running game that the Cowboys have, which can really help kind of buoy your offense when you're facing that kind of too high shell defense. I think it's just going to make the offense, the Cowboys offense a little bit more stable than the Chiefs offense. We'll see exactly what they try to do. I imagine that they're just going to lean into trying to throw it all over the field. Uh, and if that's the case, you know, there could be tip passes, there could be interceptions, you know, I think that's all those things. It's, it's, it's a lot more uh, wide open. What can happen when you're keeping everything in front of you with Mahomes? because at some point he's just going to get impatient and try to t- take a deep shot when maybe he shouldn't. Yeah. And he's probably going to hit on a couple deep shots when he probably sure. should. Right. Like that's just the, mm-hmm. the, the gift of Mahomes. He's so good at throwing the ball down the field. Uh, just a little couple things I've heard that the Cowboys are going to try to do in this game. It sounds like, Micah Parsons is going to stay at edge in this game for a couple of different reasons. Number one, they think he has a big matchup over Andrew Wiley or Mike Remmers, mm-hmm. whoever's playing right tackle. And he does. Athleticism-wise, yeah. he does. They think with his combination of speed and with the drops that Patrick Mahomes takes, which are <laughs> the deepest drops I think I've ever <laughs> seen from a quarterback, they think no. he could really create a lot of pressure in this game. Uh, it also sounds like J. Ron Curse is going to be the one covering – Travis Kelsey, basically, he's going to be one of your box linebackers in this game. And they they trust him the most to make tackles in the open field against Kelsey. And I think that makes that, that makes probably sense. makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Now, Kelsey's probably going to catch a bunch of passes in this game. Like, I would oh, not yeah. be surprised if this is a double-digit catch game for Kelsey. The Cowboys just know we can't let a nine-yard sit route turn into a 35-yard exactly. touchdown. And Kelsey's done that through his entire career. Like he's one of the best tight ends in the NFL at making plays after the catch. So uh, we shall see, but I think the chiefs are going to have a lot of success in this game. I yeah. have no idea where Trevon Diggs is going to line up. I would think he's a better matchup with Josh Gordon than uh, the, Tra- or the Tyree, Tyree kill. kill. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 the Cowboys defense is good. They're playing really well. They're still without their, you know, two of their best players in Gregory and Lawrence. So I think the Chiefs will probably score in the low thirties. They're they're just yeah. they're super talented. There's there should be no expectation for the Cowboys that this team is going to shut out or they're not going to hold them to thirteen them. points like the yeah. Packers did two weeks. Ago. Like they're just the, the key the key is is like even the games that Kansas City has lost this this year they're moving the ball like they're 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 putting up a ton of yards like. You know, I think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that they are. They still lead the league in yards per drive, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they do. Uh, I, I, yeah, and they're like third, fourth in points per drive. So, so you fighting. know, and, and it's. I mean, it seems counterintuitive, but the best way to beat the team that has the best third down success rate in the NFL is it's to get, get them the them third, in down third downs. Yeah. like it still is the best way to beat them. Uh, and I think that's you know where the great equalizer is going to be for the Cowboys is. Uh, can you get them off the field? Can you force a turnover? Uh, it's you know it's a daunting task for both defenses. I just feel like the Cowboys have a little bit better chance of stopping the uh, the Chiefs offense than vice versa. I will say, I think looking at their schedule, and I know they play the Cardinals later on in the season, but I think this is their toughest game remaining for a, a oh, yeah. bunch of reasons, right? Mahomes is an MVP quarterback. Andy Reid's one of the best coaches in the NFL. Andrew Reid's always been really good against the Cowboys, right? Even back to his days in Philadelphia. Yep. Playing in Kansas City is really, really hard. And this is the healthiest the Chiefs have been all season long. They get Chris Jones uh, back, you know, who's really started to play well over the last couple of weeks. The offensive line's fully healthy. Uh, Travis Kelsey's healthy after being a little bit banged up. It's not going to be an easy game regardless. So 
I, I'm going to pick the Chiefs because that's what I do in the show to try to help out yeah. Cowboys Nation. Yeah. But if they lose this game, I don't want people to think, okay, they're not a Super Bowl contender anymore. They, they are a little overhyped. It's just not the case. It's it's really tough to win in Kansas City. Yeah, this is a very tough game uh, for anybody. Uh, Kansas City getting their groove back in time to play the Cowboys, I think was, yeah, like everybody's saying is true. The Cowboys are good enough to win this game for sure. Like, I mean, there's a reason that the Chiefs are only two and a half point underdogs at home. Like, you know, that should be three points, all things being equal. That means that at, at least Vegas thinks that the Cowboys have a chance or they think that the <laughs> the Cowboys betters think that they have a chance. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that, you know, for me, this is this. These are two teams that really are kind of mirror images of each other, as much as as any two teams in the league. You've got explosive offenses. You've got defenses that are built on playing complementary football, about getting turnovers, getting off the field here and there, and relying on their uh, on their offenses of scoring yeah. and, and and putting the other teams in, in bad spots. So you know the the fact that it's in Kansas City, uh, the fact that it's 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 a uh, you know, it's everyone's kind of getting healthy all at once. Uh, it's going to make for a very explosive game, I, I would imagine. Um, and I, I will I'm say, if the Cowboys win this game, <laughs> if they win this game, we really need to start talking about them as Super Bowl contenders. Because I know the Chiefs have struggled right. some, but a lot of the, they've got a lot of impressive wins still. If they win this game on the road, it's, it's <laughs> it might be one of the two or three best teams in football. It's what it's like I've been saying for a while. I talked about it on Twitter before. You can't avoid these games. Don't avoid these games. Yeah. You've got to go through the best teams in the league if you want to win the Super Bowl. You can't just hope for the, the path of least resistance. We you've got to settle all debts, you know, yeah. and uh beating one of the best teams in football that has been in the Super Bowl for the last two years with you know uh Should have been MVP last three. type talent for a D four penalty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can go there. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think that it would show that this team has kind of arrived on a new plane that mm -hmm. it hasn't been on probably since, uh, I mean, 2016, maybe before that, maybe that Romo, you know, 2014, yeah, 2014 probably. year. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so I, I think I agree. It's this is a game where to me, if the Cowboys lose, I'm not, you know, the I'm not thinking button. less of them. I, I, I'm, yeah. As long as it's close. Like if if they lose by six points, it's fine. Now if they get crushed in this game and they lose by 21, okay, that's when we start to think about some problems. But if it's a close game and they just they can't stop Mahomes in the final possession, much like the Tampa Bay game, right? In week yeah. one, I'm not going to think less about that. This is one of the hardest things you can ask any football team to do: go into Kansas City and beat a healthy, hot Kansas City Chiefs team. So if they don't do it. You know, I, I, I'm not th throwing away my Super Bowl hopes. If they do do it, I am going to be absolutely insufferable. Next we'll time. have a fun little show here on Sunday night <laughs> if they do do that. Let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, all right. That is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you can check us out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Follow the show at Locked on Cowboys. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I am at Marcus underscore Mosher. Again, we're going to do a show on Sunday night. We'll have a preview show on or crossover on Tuesday or Wednesday. Another preview show getting ready for the, the Raiders game. Crazy, crazy week. So enjoy the game. We'll see you guys next time.